Okay, so uh, we're going to do some cool physics problems. Uh, I have a one problem, and I want to do it a whole bunch of different ways. It's going to be fun. Okay, so let me describe, and so I originally thought, hey, I'll just make this one big video, but I think each problem is going to be long enough, I'd rather break it into pieces. So before I forget, down here, or over there, or up here somewhere, I'll have a link to the next, at the end probably, a uh, link to the next version. Okay, so let me describe the problem. I have here the moon, and I have an object here, the Lego piece. Okay, so this Lego piece is in space. It starts at a distance of three times the radius of the moon, and at rest, and it falls down to two r. Okay, and the question is, how fast is it going when it gets down here to two times the radius? So it's still above the surface of the Earth. How fast is it going? Uh, and I should point out my ancient and broken moon model. Favorite thing. The back's blank because it was made before anyone knew what was on the back side of the moon. And that's awesome. And I love it. Uh, and someone dropped it a long time ago because it's old. But, okay, so let's move that out of the way so we don't break it. And now how do we solve this problem? Going from uh, 3R to 2R. Now, you might say, well, hey, I can do that. Here's the moon. And let's put my uh, axis right there just to make things simpler. And so this is the radius r. Uh, and so here we are going from here down to there. And the, the most um, first instinct is to say, hey, momentum principle, forces, calculate the forces. And that's not the best idea, but we're gonna do it anyway, for you. Okay, so the idea is to say, well look, I can calculate the gravitational force. Up here I have, let's call this position one, and here we'll call this position two, and I'll say F1 is some gravitational force, F2 is some other gravitational force, and I can calculate F in general. If I know the position, I could say F1, the magnitude, uh, and let's put this in the y direction just for now. It's going to be negative g, mass of the moon, mass of the object. And this is a 100 kilogram uh, object. M, not that it really matters. Uh, M over, this is going to be r1 squared times the vector, I already have put a negative sign there, 0, 1, 0, so it's in the negative y direction. So I can calculate that gravitational force. Uh, I can also uh, calculate the force at F2, and that's the problem, is that I don't have a constant force. So it's going to be really difficult to deal with the situation. Okay, so when you have difficult situations, the best thing to do is cheat. It's not really cheating, it's just kind of approximating. So what I'm going to do is calculate the force F1. I'm going to calculate the force F2, and then I'm going to calculate the force F average, where F average is F1 plus F2 over 2. Okay, And then with the average force, I can just assume it's constant, even though it's not. That's my first step. Okay. So, But even then, if I have a constant force moving down, how do I find the speed there over some distance. So that is a little bit more difficult. I can start with, and I'm going to switch to the y, everything's in the y direction now, so I can deal with scalars. I can start with f average, which is just f1 plus f2 over 2, is the change of momentum. No, not a vector. And this is all in the y direction. py, f average y, delta t. Uh, so I know my initial momentum is zero. I don't know my final momentum, I want that. I don't know the time. So it's really difficult to use momentum principle here in a straightforward way. And that's why I'm doing this problem so you can see. Momentum principle is the best thing to do. Okay. Uh, so let me just solve for delta P. Delta P, and this is in the y direction. F average delta T. But again, I don't know delta T. I have another thing that I have delta T with, and that's the average velocity. It's going to be v1 plus v2 over 2, that's definition of average, and that's going to be equal to delta r 
over delta t, where r is going to be uh, r2 minus r1, delta r. That's in the y direction. So I really should put this as delta y, because I said I was dealing with the y direction. Okay. So, but right here, I can solve for delta t, and then I can plug that in up there and solve for the final v. So let's rewrite this one. Let's say uh, m times v2 minus v1 equals f average delta t. I know that v1 is 0, so I'm going to go ahead and put that as 0. Uh, and I can then say v2 equals f average over m delta t. And then over here, I can again say v1 is 0, and I can solve this for delta t. I get delta t equals delta y 2 over v2. I just solve this, multiply both sides by delta t, multiply both sides by 2, divided by v2 because v1 was 0, and I get that, so I put that in, I get f average over m, and I get 2 delta y as v2 over v2. Now I want to solve for v2, multiply both sides by v2, and I get v2 squared. I know it's a lot of work, but I told you it wasn't the best way. It's your own fault. v2 is f average over m times 2 delta y. And then I can take the square root of both sides, and when you use a whiteboard, you can do it like that. And there you go. And if that looks familiar, you say, oh, well, there's a kinematic equation that looks like one of those kinematic equations. It is the kinematic equation, okay? But it doesn't have time. Okay, so let's get that value for V2. So I know F average, I've calculated F average. So I need to know G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th uh, Newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. I know the mass of the moon is, I'll write it down, so I don't know the mass, 7.35, 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. Uh, the radius of the moon, I'll just call that R, 1.73 times 10 to the 6 meters. Okay, so plug in G, M, M, R1 squared, and I get the magnitude there. Do it again for R2, and then find the average. And I got, I, I, I redid this part on my calculator. See, I'm not making it up, see. I did some trinket, I'm not making it up. I did prepare a little bit. Uh, so let me put this right here. So I get F average magnitude is 29.3. Okay. Now, and, and you'll notice that when I divide by the mass over here, it's going to really cancel whatever I put there. So I put it in, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so now I get, this is going to be equal to the square root of F average over M times 2 and then delta y is going to be equal to uh, r2, which is, I've already taken into account the direction, I think. So r2 is r minus, so I think this is just going to be r, times 2 times r. I think I've already taken into account the direction. I made a slight mistake. It's, not the best way to do it, I told you. Okay, so let me put this in my calculator here. So let's say uh, V2 equals the square root of F average times 2 times R divided by M. Now I get 1,009.4. Okay, so again, we cheated, right? We cheated because I used the average force instead of the force, and the force changes. Um, but even with that, it wasn't super trivial. 
Uh, and even then, I don't get the vector velocity. Uh, I only get the magnitude because I had to do some squaring and stuff like that. So, okay. Next one's going to be mm, mostly easier. Um, so the next case, I'm going to solve the problem again, again using momentum principle. But I'm going to do it numerically. Okay. So that will be a link right here or right there or right there. I can't, I don't know how to do links. It'd definitely be, be somewhere like, I want to make like a playlist of this whole thing. So maybe it'd be a playlist. I don't know. I'll just surprise you. It'll be somewhere. Hopefully you'll find it. Hopefully you, this is useful for you. It's useful for me. We'll see you in the next video.